From Chaos Cutter Corona 12, there's a new section, Instance Editor. In this tutorial, we'll learn how to create and manage instances using advanced tools such as Brush, Raise, and much more. By the end of this video, you'll be able to control highly detailed scenarios, manage object placement, and optimize the performance of your scenes. Let's get started. To easily manage the many instances we are going to create, we'll use simple geometries like spheres, boxes and pyramids instead of pebbles, grass and plants to keep the viewport running smoothly. Select the scatter object from the toolbar then choose the surface and the object to distribute which will appear across the entire plane. Now go to the Instance Editor and select the brush to paint additional instances. Just as we painted them, we can also eliminate them using the Erase option. As you can see, this option only affects the instances we've just added. This happens because by default we have the Erase Only Brush at Instances parameter active. If we deactivate it, we can erase any instance. This way, for example, we can create a path simply by manually erasing the instances. Next, let's create another scatter to paint some pebbles. Add the plane and the spheres. This time set the count to zero so that no new instances are generated. Then go directly to the instance editor. Here we have the brush radius which controls the size of the brush followed by paint rate which determines the number of instances generated with each click. We set it to 1 and we get one object. If we set it to 3, there will be 3 instances and so on up to its maximum value. For creating pebbles which have a high density, it's fine to set a high value. Also paint by going over the same spot multiple times until you achieve the desired density. At a certain point you might notice that the instances start to disappear as you paint new ones. This could be due to the max instances value which indeed appears in orange. This means that the instances are present but not visible because of the maximum limit set to viewport preview. To see them all we can increase this value but keep in mind that too many instances can slow down your workstation. To prevent these objects from overlapping unnecessarily, we can activate and adjust the spacing parameter to around 30%, 13-40%. This sets a minimum distance between instances, optimizing the scene. Now let's create another chaos scatter for the trees. Of course they will appear distributed across the entire surface. We can move these instances simply by activating the editor and moving the objects. However, if at this point we apply a rule, such as a scaling for example, you'll notice that all the objects change except for the green ones, which are the ones we moved manually. 
let's repeat the process and my advice is to apply the rules first and then move them manually. This way the objects will respect the last modification applied. As with all random systems, we can modify the randomness at any time using the seed parameter. When this value changes, everything resets, but if we re-enter the previous seed value, you'll see that it retains the modifications made before. In this time-lapse clip, you can see the same operations performed in a more detailed scene where we have a grass scatter where I erased some parts, then painted with pebbles and finally added some few flowers in strategic spots. The applications are clearly countless, for example in the official Chaos Corona video we see leaves being added on a plane with the same tool. These operations can also be done using splines or maps. You can find all these techniques and much more in my official Corona course. Regarding Distance Editor, I find this type of tools very convenient, especially if you want to draw directly in the viewport to help control the final look and the photographic composition. Ciao!